In this video, we're going to be going over our More menu up at the top here. Uh, when we go to More, our first option that we can select is Map, uh, and this just gets us to a uh, just to a map view where we can see our model, uh, see our points, uh, kind of get a basic feel for uh, what we're working with. Um, we have our all of our navigation tools in here, uh, and we also have the measure function in here. Um, inside of going back to More, uh, selecting Jobs, we have a few options here. Uh, manage, import, export, and settings. Uh, I'm going to jump to settings first because uh, normally you want to set up your settings. Um, and in Trimble Field Link, once you set these up, they'll always stay the same unless you change them. Um, so, for example, you, when you set up your distance units, your coordinate order, temperature, and uh, language, it, it will remain the same. You won't have to do this for every single job. Uh, you just have to do it once at the beginning. Um, so the first uh, option here is distance units, and this will uh, basically display distance units or units, measurement units, uh, either in meters, uh, we have decimal feet, um, a quarter inch, eighth inch, or a sixteenth inch, which basically rounds off our measurements to the nearest quarter, eighth or sixteenth. Uh, normally, I leave mine at a sixteenth just because I want to see the exact distances or as close to exact as possible. Um, if you set it to, say, a quarter, um, all your readings, all your distance measurements are going to round to the nearest quarter. Now, the unit will still record the exact uh, measurement. It's just going to display the information rounded to the nearest quarter. Um, for coordinate order, we have XYZ and NEZ, um, northing, uh, easting, and elevation, uh, and then XYZ is well, x-axis, y-axis, and the z, uh, z is elevation as well. Uh, a lot of um, a lot of surveyors use NEZ. Um, you can switch between these two on the fly, um, so you can basically just watch out for these. Uh, normally, XYZ is basically standard for uh, your CAD department um, is normally what they use. Uh, for the temperature, we have Fahrenheit and Celsius. I'm just going to leave it in uh, Fahrenheit. And language, you have a few language options here that you can switch between. Um, our clear layout flags option here, um, if we've staked points, uh, for example, like I have these points staked here, uh, it's, it's these are shown in green are basically ones that are staked in tolerance. These are sh uh, shown to be staked out of tolerance. If I want to clear all of my stake data, um, this will not delete your points. It's only going to delete the uh, information uh, that has to do with you staking the points out in the field. If you hit the clear flag button and then you click clear, it will erase all the information of all the work you've done on this job. Um, use this. I would only use this if you've started to lay out, laying out a job um, that was incorrect, meaning you loaded the wrong file for the job that you're using and you just needed to clear it out. Uh, for the most part, you're not going to clear uh, clear the layout flags. Um, if you've, for example, staked a point that is out of tolerance, you can select that point and restake it. Um, you don't go in here to clear everything. Um, going back to jobs and manage. Um, so inside here, this is where we actually load our TFL file, which is which contains all of our point information. Um, up at the top, it says current. So this is the current job that is uh, open. We have some information over here as far as how many points are in that file, how many points we've staked, uh, how many models are associated with it, um, things like that. Um, uh, below that, we have recent. So these are recent jobs that we've uh, been working on or that we've used. Um, and then uh, further below that is favorites. Uh, if you want to favorite a job, you click the star and that job will appear in your favorites. That way you don't have to go looking for it through your Windows directory. Um, when you click on the tablet icon here, um, this will take you to your Windows directory where you can actually search for your jobs. Uh, normally, all jobs are stored inside of Documents, Trimble Field Link, uh, Jobs. So in that folder is where you normally put all of the uh, jobs that you're going to be working with. You can definitely create folders within jobs. Um, and it's best to do that to keep yourself organized. Um, once you have a job, you can select it, click open, and it will open that job. We have the delete option if you want to delete a job. Um, and then you can do save as if you want to uh, basically save a copy of the job. Uh, create will create a new blank job with no information on it. Um, we can also load jobs from uh, a flash drive. If you have a flash drive plugged in, uh, the icon will be, you'll be able to click it. Um, if you do not have a flash drive plugged in, it will be gray, just like this cloud icon. 
um, and you can basically plug in a flash drive with job with uh, your jobs on it um, select them click open and they will uh, automatically save um, internally to the tablet um, so you can continue to use those jobs and then uh, uh, and remove the flash drive um, the cloud icon, this is for Trimble Connect. Uh, Trimble Connect is basically a cloud-based service that, that we offer. Um, you can create an account uh, and sign into it, and you can store all your jobs in the cloud. Um, it's very useful for transferring job data or um, reports or basically pretty much any kind of um, um, you know, layout information that you need um, using, that, uh, using Trimble Connect. Uh, so now if I, I've signed into my account, uh, when I go back into here and select my cloud icon, it connects to the web. Um, so you do need an internet connection when you're, um, when you're trying to download your jobs. Um, so this connects to the web and here's all the jobs that I have in here. Um, for example, if I go into this folder, uh, I should be able to find um, a job that I can load. So I can uh, select that and open that file and it will uh, bring that in. So it's going to download that job, save it locally, and let me basically work offline. So once you've actually downloaded it, uh, once you've hit open, um, the, the software will do this in the background so you don't have to actually worry about it. It will download the job, um, save it to um, documents, Trimble field link jobs, and that way you can work with the file without having to be connected to the internet anymore. Um, Going back to uh, jobs, uh, we also have import. Uh, so import works uh, by importing a background file. Um, so the native file for Trimble Field Link is called a TRB file. Um, you can also import DWGs, uh, PDFs, uh, DXF, uh, SketchUp file, um, IFCs as well. Um, and when you select it and you hit import, um, the TFL software will automatically convert it to a TRB file. Um, and they'll be able to use it. Um, once again, you can uh, open the jobs either from your Windows directory, uh, the uh, Trimble Connect, or from your, um, uh, from your uh, flash drive. Um, reports we're actually gonna cover later. Uh, there's a few reports you can generate, uh, basically a daily layout summary for at the end of the day, layout deviations for your job and a field report um, about. Uh, gets you some information about your tablet and about the software you're running. Uh, so it shows you the version you're currently on. Um, we have uh, the licenses that the tablet or the software is licensed for, as well as your serial number and the uh, support expiration date. Um, we also have an option here to click for log files. Uh, the log files will get you, um, basically, if, if you get an error in the field or something happens, the software crashes, you can uh, get the log files, send them to support, and support will be able to diagnose them and see what the issue is. Um, moving on, uh, minimize and exit. Uh, obviously, minimize will minimize the software, and exit will uh, close out the software.